pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Let's sing by here. It's not on the agenda, so I'm going to ask. So, unless, Counselor, you have anything that's not on the agenda that you want to bring up? I do. Um, if you would add an item to the agenda related to an ordinance, uh, it's ordinance authorizing the installation of a, a traffic control device, a stop sign at the intersection of um, Fairview and Bowman. Yes. Okay. I need a motion to uh, amend the agenda to add a reading of an ordinance. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion, Greg. I second, Greg. Second that. I'll make that unanimous. I'm also going to ask to amend the agenda to add uh, or to be able to talk about uh, Big Ox Road and the property there uh, with some a quote we got for removal of a couple of trailers there. So I'll entertain a motion to amend the agenda for that as well. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion, Greg. I say Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So. All right. Without any further ado, share it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to start with? It don't matter. I can start, I guess, uh, request for ARPA funds. Uh, the first one is going to be, uh, the request would be for uh, the uh, intercom and the camera upgrades to yep. the jail. I'll let Andrew yeah. to tell about that, the price anyway. We, we've talked about it a couple times with you guys. Um, we're just asking for, so we did bid the project out and Stanley or Securitas was the only ones that came back. It was at, it was at 233,000 and some change. I talked to Chris Allen from Stanley or Securitas last week. And by the time that we are able to get this project pushed through, labor is in increased. I guess there's new rates at the fourth quarter of this year. He cannot so get- that number not the same? 235? It's changed. So <clears throat> I talked to him and he, he can't get the new numbers currently either, but he said to, request 245,000 if possible. We're trying to request that for ARPA funds. So is that for the video that and is the audio? Total, that is intercoms and the whole video system upgrades. Okay. I know we talked last time about the opioid funds and yep. was shot down from that. Um, is there, and I, I think I brought it up, is there not money in the jail coy fund or jail? What, I don't know which, what's the term for the, the fund, but isn't there a fund that funds repairs and- There uh, is a list, jail? special yeah. purpose. Like special. special purpose. Um, and we do have money in there, but we're gonna have to make some additional appropriations out of that. So that will need to be looked at, but we're gonna have to see how we make money to see to do that. So I guess my question was, I'll, I'm, and I'm, I'm not a councilman, so I'm, but isn't there, wasn't there a fund that was set aside for repairs and stuff for the jail and, and nothing else was taken out of this fund? I mean, not no. that I'm aware of. All I know is there's a special purpose and there is a building maintenance line. What's in the that? jail coit fund? I don't think that's anymore. I think one of the funds, Mike, uh, is our jail uh payment comes out of it four hundred and some thousand yeah. and they pay our jail officer's salary out of that too and, and i don't know how that's much the that, lit. That's yeah i don't know how much that leaves after that that's what's strictly for the jail okay because less the uh the coit that's for the upgrade of the jail that's what it is but that should be called lit special purposes so it changes the, yeah. yeah. change the verbiage all right I'm not um, sure how many times I spoke to Jennifer a couple of times because there was some money that was coming in and out. We didn't know for sure exactly how much was going to be. That's there. Uh, and sure. I, I did look up before the meeting 
Um, currently, I think we have 700. No, it's a little over 800,000 in there. I think I'm out with that table. In, in that, in but that they're in that special. lit special purpose. And then we will get two more payments of $107,000, basically. We'll get that November like 4th and December 4th. But like I said, we've got some issues with overspent funds and things that we're going to have to move around mm -hmm. that we need to see what we can do with lit special purpose before we can really get it nailed down because we've got additional appropriations that have not been worked out with us in the jail to see what we're going to do. It's there. been worked out between us, it just ain't been worked out with the other board. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, there, there's some work there. Yeah. So with that, oh, sorry, here's some. So with that, I guess I, where I'm, if, if the request is from ARPA, where where do we stand with ARPA? And I, and I know that I've, you gave reports before about uh, here's what it is, and, and, and I know, I guess I'm confused on some of the reports of, is it a report that's showing here's here's the balance, here's the actual balance, or is here's the balance and here's what the commissioners have appropriate or uh, not appropriate, that's not a good word, allocated funds from the ARPA funds that but was they the haven't last, been appropriated from the council yet. Yeah, that was the last one that I gave you. And it's, I think, two months old now. Uh, I'll go back and look, but I don't believe anything from ARPA has gone through the council since then, so I think those numbers are still the same. And I'll, I'll have that figured again before our November the 6th meeting when we sit down. Um, but with that, you'll, we'll go look at our cash ledger, see how much cash is actually there, what's been appropriated, what's been spent, and then I'll also take those numbers of any uh, outstanding resolutions that you guys have sent to the council that have not been approved yet. We just need to know what the the bottom line is because yeah. you know I in my mind there's a million two hundred thousand or roughly there but but I've I've heard changes and numbers and everything else but Can I yeah, yeah. Uh, just I think I, I believe we're all yes we're gonna get this equipment it's just how we're gonna get the equipment at this at this moment as far as ARPA goes um, I'm for using that if we have that much left. We, the commissioners, have to decide where the ARPA goes, right? The council hasn't appropriated any of them funds for any of that stuff. So we really need to get solid numbers mm -hmm. of what we're going to have left in there to find out whether or not we can take it out of there. But I'm, I'm kind of like Mike, I, I'd like to see what lit would have in it after everything, the dust flies yeah. off that and use as much of that as possible because there's a lot of people who well, needs a lot of equipment in the county that we can use our before. Mm -hmm. And if we can buy the bulk out of this with your lit or all of it out of your lit, I, I, that's the way I would like to go. I don't know about you well, guys, but well again it's I'm, hard to give you an answer i guess is what right now but yes on the equipment 100 percent for it want to see you get it. let's just figure out how we're going to do it it's, when i, I do know when i talk to chris october 25th he can have the new numbers in black and white also so if we well if he can get so i mean you're saying he's telling you 240 he's saying it's just a plate safe but October 25th, he can have the meeting <clears throat> black and white also. Well, I mean, get that to us because we have a meeting, I think Jennifer said on the 6th. 30? No. no, we have one on the 6th uh, with a joint meeting we requested with the council. To, and that is, we're going to have our meeting for an hour and then we're going to stop our meeting and have a joint meeting with the council to discuss, you know, the, the remaining ARPA funds and um, what they're going to, I guess, uh, I'm not so, going to get into that again. So, council will have another meeting also after the 6th, too. They'll, They'll be their last the meeting. 12th. And ARPA funds have to be appropriated by the end of this year. 31st. 
31st. And I'm going to tell you they will be. So. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, too, is while we were talking about that, since we are talking about the ARPA, I was going to ask if you wanted to go ahead and get the cattle out of ARPA funds, too. If that was, if you wanted to, that's, that's, I'm just giving, yeah. throwing the options out I to you. I thought we had that work out another way. We was going to look at that lit, but they didn't vote on it, see. So it hadn't been in front of the council mm -hmm. yet. So council didn't have an October meeting. Yeah. So and it wasn't advertised right. anyway because I didn't learn about that soon enough to get it advertised. So that'll have to be advertised for the November the twelfth meeting anyway. That's what I was talking about. If we could advertise mm -hmm. it in both, and then that way, yes. whichever one, if it, just if you guys decide <laughs> to take it out of one, you know, that'd be fine. Whatever one you wanted to take. Yeah, I'd get it advertised. So, so that is. And there was one other thing well, I was going to ask you too. Could we not uh, use uh, use unrestricted? I don't know if we have. It's twenty thousand. Twenty thousand worth thirty nine dollars and seventy two cents. Have twenty thousand and unrestricted. I hate to say right now I couldn't tell you, but I so I looked it up at the last meeting. What I thought it was thirty something. The last Maybe. meeting. Maybe so too. But weren't we taking? No, we even if you do that, though, it doesn't get you past the requirement to do the additional appropriation. So you still have to wait mm -hmm. until it has to be advertised. Still has to go to the council. So. I think go ahead and advertise everything he's talking about. And I got one more. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I said everything. Okay. So we're advertising the jail upgrades as. Well, so you want that more and then, um, yeah. yeah, yeah they can. These well, guys can decide well, and our I, well, we can't make that decision for them, and I'm not going to. But yeah, okay. uh, all we can do is say that there's funds that they can fund that they can make money from and if they don't have that you know i hate to say it but i mean uh, this isn't something that you can do without uh, and i would hate to think that uh, you know if and i, I guess separate that take arpa money and say you never had it we're standing here and saying you need two hundred forty-five thousand dollars to fix something in jail. What would you do? Well, you're probably going to go to the bank and borrow the money if you don't have it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's where my thought is. I mean, throwing ARPA and all the other money that's, yeah. that's sitting out there that that we can or can't use. And, and how are you getting by without now? Without it's broke. It's, we, it's, it's got a work order in. It's there. Are you talking about the kettle or the? The oh, the oh, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm about to talk about we're, the intercom system. No, no, they're no. They're cooking on the stones <clears> and they're doing, using every piece of equipment down there to cook it up, heating it up, and everything. So, so this, it's not being used right now. No, no, we can't. We're afraid to use it. So I guess we right. right. So you're just having got a bunch of kettles on the and yeah. having to boil it and pour them all together. So it looks like power's out. And you're yeah, I was warming it up. Yeah. yeah. So it's something that needs to be done, but it's not. A dire emergency. Well, that's pretty good. We need it done, yeah. Right. I'm just obviously. Oh, I see what you're saying. I mean, if it's not done tomorrow, I mean, if it was something that was, had to be done tomorrow, we'd already been over here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I just has to be done. Wonder, you know, what what are we supposed to do in these emergency mm -hmm. cases like this? So something has to be taken care of. And the reason why we're waiting is because there's four to six week back order on that cattle. So we got it ordered because it takes four to six weeks for delivery. You have it ordered. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had to order it, obviously. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, good. that's what we asked. That's why I asked about it. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, I understand that. Yeah. I'm just, you know, as far as getting it paid for, I'm just, I, I, right. What, what, what's, your, what's your step whenever we can't get the the council to make a decision on something? I don't know what, you can't let the world fall down around your shoulders. Right. I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's you, don't want, you don't want me to come. So we're going to advertise the jail equipment for next for the sixth. No, be for the twelfth. For the twelfth. Well, unless. Well, the sixth here. It, so we're going to ask either, again either on the sixth. Either, either, either no, the sixth is uh -huh. a special. It's just a joint meeting, gotcha. and, and it's going to be a conversation between the, the two boards. You need to advertise for everything. And it has to be in the paper. Even though we do something, even on January or uh, November 6th, we come to a conclusion to buy your equipment out of where we're fine. Yep. You still have to come to the council meeting, and then it has to be okay from that. But we would still have to come back to you guys to get the approval, correct, and resolution. We, we can approve it. Council has to. 
we can approve it and uh, <clears throat> well I think the question he's asking is this yeah if we, we was going to advertise it in lit and or part of everything yeah. we needed to and then whichever one wanted, they wanted to choose it out yeah. they could choose it out yeah that's good. true because again we don't know what that balance well, is of ARPA and we're we have a we have stuff that we've appropriated for or allocated for and they haven't appropriated it yet so I want to make sure that those funds are there and then whatever the balance is if we have enough yeah. then we can, we'll, we can look at things like that okay. we'll, we'll right. put it down restricted also we'll do that yes okay, cool okay so, last thing I've got then, uh, I would like to have a request to open up bids for three uh, trucks, the Lexus school trucks, and I was hoping to have it out of the ARPA fund. If there was uh, monies left after you guys got done again. So, so what are those about? It'd be 180000 total for three of them. That's out the door? Yeah, that's out the door. That's turnkey. That's lots, sirens, and everything. So. And that's for 2025. We we would order them now. You see what I'm saying? Through the ARPA monies. So, okay. and if not, I've got them placed on the. We put them on the budget next year's budget. But I don't, you know, you know what I'm saying. We get through the ARPA funds. Forget the money. We'll see money. where we're at. So we're advertise that in the ARPA funds. Okay. Because, yeah. mm -hmm. We can do that. No, that'll be for November the 12th. Okay. Right. Well, be the 6th. Because if they can approve it, then it's a regular meeting. If it's advertised, yeah. they can approve it. I don't. Let me see what I can do. Okay. I, I'll have to have the advertisements in by Friday at noon, and I can do that. Okay. I think there is one that they're going to go ahead and do on the 6th. I don't know about the others. Okay. So right. we can throw it out there then. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and open the bids tomorrow. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. That's it. All right. Then I got couple more things too. So is it for six for six trucks? For three yeah, three for six. Yes, these are six trucks. And Chevy has now jumped into the game and they've got pursuit rated vehicles and not SSBs. They're pursuit rated. Hmm. So they well, somebody needs to jump in. in. Yeah. There's only one or two players. That's a true thing. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, you. Pass those down. See you. <clears throat> right. You made a comment. So you made a comment saying something about they're going to approve something on the 6th. Mm -hmm. It's the 6th. Um, it's there's a special a, meeting. Now, yes. now, I saw the back and forth with the emails. I mean, mm -hmm. the meeting that we're having on the 6th, we're having a regular meeting, and that's at 6 o'clock, we're having a joint meeting that's pertaining to ARPA. I mean, if the council wants to have a meeting or create a meeting to do an appropriation or whatever they need to do that on their own because this is this is a joint meeting that we called for ARPA money and and I, I don't know if legally can they legally open something and say they can hold business on a meeting that we called they don't have the same requirements uh, I mean as long as a meeting is noticed for them I believe that they could take action <clears throat> I mean, the way I would say it is, we call a special meeting for the commissioners. There's a statute that specifically prescribes taking action on things that are outside the scope of what we notice the meeting for. I don't believe that there is a similar corollary statute that applies to the county council. I mean, I don't know where they're going to and what part of our joint meeting they are going to take up their regular business. That's where I'm getting at. But, okay. Is uh, that? I don't, if we did that, we would not be able to. If we try to do that, I would tell you that we could not do that. That's that's where I'm getting at here. But, okay, we have our regular meeting, <laughs> but we couldn't, like, for instance, schedule a special meeting for ARPA and then suddenly begin discussing you know, uh, uh, traffic, traffic control devices, you know. Um, That's where I'm getting at, because I don't know if it's, if they're legally, if they're legal, legally able That's, to do what they're, I don't know. Their I get that, yeah. but I'm, I'm just saying that I heard through an email is that, oh, we're going to do an appropriation. Well, you need to advertise that you're doing a meeting somewhere within our meeting that, and that's where I was like, 
it's our meeting. We called for a joint meeting, and it's, it's I don't know where, how they handle their business, so. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. I just want to make sure. Uh, so, I got a quote from a company called Link Systems, and they do panic and uh, panic systems. Um, we're currently in a public meeting. I really don't want to go into the details of how our security systems is, are. I don't have to do that, and I'll tell you don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so right now, I mean, we do have security systems in place. Um, could they be better? Yes. So Link Systems has has got us a quote, and what it can do is offer every county employee, every department, every building that we own a panic button at their workstation, with no include no extra hardware or anything like that. That's just what we have on site. It's just a software that I would implement to everyone's workstations. So is this an upgrade or this is a major upgrade. So right now, uh, there might be some buildings that are not the most secure. All right, we'll stop it. So, yeah. <laughs> so this will provide a whole county, every building, every workstation a panic button of some sort they hit it dispatch screens pop up it literally tells them it's at this department it's this person's workstation okay so you're asking for ARPA seven, funds seventeen thousand nine hundred and ten dollars yep out of ARPA so it looks here like it has a what's the standard server one year uh it is three thousand dollars a year which i can cover that's no problem so that's we will not I, need an additional for the three thousand yearly so you can cover the the year to year yep i actually the next thing we want to talk about will actually say around forty eight hundred dollars a year so okay. um <clears throat> I think mean, I mean I I think it's a great idea. I mean I know we already have it. It's just upgrading our system to. And I guess I'll ask because I don't remember in the seven point seven years I've been here that we did anything like that. So it's been that long. <clears throat> been upgraded since. We I mean we have some hardwired panic buttons and some people's desks and there's some wireless. This just gives a hundred percent coverage of every county employee. I'd say it's probably a good deal, but what's your guys' thoughts? Is there a way to hook the pepper spray up to the sprinkler system? <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for extra cost, they could probably fit something into that. That's just like eight. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I was going better than that. I'm like, you can buy some blocks. Or... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, I'm fine with it. Um, but again, for me, I, I, until we know, we, we got to get some hard figures on this hard Okay. Let me just bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Well, or. Or advertise it, do the same thing as your, just advertise it as okay. ARPA unrestricted. He said the price is good till the end of the year, also. So. Oh, that's good. And we, again, we don't have to spend the money by the end of the year. We just have Not to decide to make it where it's going. Where it's going. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I'll agree with Mike, though. I'm, I'm ranking it. I mean, I'm, I'm for it as well. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good uh, investment. Yeah, I mean, we just. We live in a very turbulent time, and you know, seventeen thousand—that's all that is to possibly save somebody's life, or it'd be a lot of situation. On all be a lot better um, response time, yeah. way better response time too. So, uh, from the sheriff's department, or even just the secu security guards getting that information that much quicker from dispatch. It's here. It's this person. They're there. Why don't you do this? Why don't you just bring it back on the 6th to okay. our regular meeting? 
and we'll know what that mm -hmm. figure is. Yeah. Our hard line figure for what's left. Sounds good. And, um, so what else you got? Uh, the next one is a Frontier contract. <clears throat> is this just a renewal? Uh, this is a new service entering a contract. Okay. It's same company, kind of same technology, but it's a, it's a, it says renewal, but it's a new service. You're adding a service to it. Replacing, okay. replacing the service. So, question for Jack. You're saying that we have this now. So, yep, so right uh, now we're replacing it with uh, upgraded technology. Okay. Right. So right now through Frontier, we currently have a um, copper PRI. So it's just literally a copper pair, just like a pox line that used to hook up to a landline. It's coming into the building. It gives us all of our voice channels throughout the whole county. All the county buildings are on this one circuit. Um, it's ISDN, PRI. I don't know if you guys remember Smart Jacks, but it's the old um, T1 cards, like the T1 connections from back in the day. That's what it operates on, but it's a really good trusted technology. It works. It, it's really good technology. But old copper lines, they're starting to move away from all the copper that's just run underground overhead everywhere. Especially if you drive around, you see the little steel boxes sitting on the ground with about spaghetti mess of telephone wires just hanging out. That's how it's kind of going. So SIP PRI is the tele the telecommunication service comes from the internet instead of copper. You actually get a ri richer call quality. It's a lot easier to just sit down on a computer and say, I need to forward these numbers to here, or I can redirect numbers, or if something goes down, we can forward. It's, it's a lot easier. Um, we'll have all the exact same phone numbers we have right now. Really, no one's gonna notice that change, except it's gonna sound better. So we're paying roughly 1,200, it can bounce. 12 to 1300 a month and this PRI is 854 a month we also do have uh, I talked to the guy that's been working with us on there we do have the right to fall back if we put this in we get it hooked up something's not right it just isn't working we can go right back to the PRI that's in the exact same closet since it's with the same company if something doesn't work right they program it back up, eye and hook, plug so it back in. Back yep. If we don't like this, we can go right back. Yeah. Like with Frontier, uh, this company here, I mean, have you had a pretty good experience? I've had their PRI for uh, five years now, Yeah. or if not more. And I mean, we have had some, like a major outage in the county before but it's been I would say two to three times a year but that's also you know maybe another carrier down the roads having issues that Frontier is connected to and it's just it's messed it up here is this the Frontier Frontier communications that's, yeah. kind of was, that's why I was yeah I mean Frontiers here. Frontiers are ones who still give your landlines that you're, okay. you know. That's why I look back here in front of you. <coughs> America. I deal with them on oh, okay. the side sometimes. Just get gotcha. things so, relocated. So yeah. That's why I was wondering yeah, what the, your experience is. I here. think they're trying to move away from pox lines and copper. That, it's just so yeah. sips the way to go. You're saying this is a, a total cost or yep. is this that's for the PR. 1300 plus this. Well, if we do have a handful of POTS lines in the county still. So I think we're going to be around probably 950 total. So we're still saving 300 to 400 around their average. So Okay. So you do this now. You have the funding now. Yeah. It's you're just it's already paid for. You're actually saving some money by saving some this. money. Yeah. So. But like I said, I'm I'm 
I like my copper PRI. It works. It's a very trusted, uh, you know, piece of hardware. If I we put this in and something gets funky and I don't like it, we'll we'll go right back. So. Okay. It's, um, and you're the IT guy. You know more about it than I do. I'm a yes. I'll entertain a motion to uh, enter into a contract or continue the contract with Frontier to change the system. And that is that is 36 month term also. That's, I forgot to tell you that. I wanted to let you guys know that. What the other one was too? I think it was three years. The old one was. So we're actually out of contract with the current one we have. So we will be re-entering into. Zach, if you look at that. The which part? This the contract at the end. Just, it's it's something that's like you said earlier. It's just a renewal, but it's it's we're asking for a different product, I guess, from the same company. It's and it's a cost savings. Yeah, I don't. I did not see anything inside the contract that gave me any pause aside from some of the stipulations about customer obligations. So as long as Andrew is comfortable that yeah. we can meet all the criteria Absolutely. that they would require prior to installation and it, we would maintain it properly, then mm -hmm. I, I don't see any issue with the... Yeah, we actually, there's no hardware from them required. It's everything that we have in-house. It just says basically that what we, it's our obligation <coughs> to ensure that our system works with whatever they provide to us. Yep. If we have a piece of our system that is non-compliant with theirs, we have to remove it. We already checked, uh, already checked with him with our PBX, the compatibility with their SIP already said it's 100% compatible. Okay. So I don't see any issue with it. It's a services oh. agreement and yeah. it's for now. It's probably already existing probably. in the budget. Yep. I'll entertain a motion to accept the um, New contract frontier for the CIP trunking system. I make that motion. Randy makes that motion. And again, I'll enter into that. It's eight hundred and fifty-four dollars and seventy-seven cents, and to be it probably adjusted a little bit. So, I'll but say. he has it funded. Yeah, uh, Randy seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So awesome. Greg seconded it. Greg seconded it, and I'll make that unanimous. There you Sweet. go. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. You guys got anything else for me? No, appreciate the internet. Awesome. Oh, the, the cell signal. The cell signal. It's been nice. <laughs> It has. Yes. <clears throat> actually send one from here when it doesn't go <laughs> sit there and spin <laughs> until I get outside and it finally goes. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Veteran service driver. Did we, oh, get a, we did not get anything back, but I meant to print off a copy of what I sent and I forgot to do that. So okay. we, we had to send it off to Wagner. We did yesterday, but it's not come back from them yet. Okay, so we'll talk about the table and talk about it on, on the six. All right. C, SCCF, uh, Jamie Toki, and with that, the ARP funding request. And that was for the ECE. Um, Is that for that directorship? Yes. Um, it was a personnel. Yeah. I've got, I've got this, and I sent it to you in the email the other day, too. I think consistent with the other... Statements about this, this table does. Well, anything that's going to be with a ARP of money right now. And I do want to say, <clears throat> Jamie is on call break, so she could not be here to do anything. And I told her I didn't think probably any decisions would be made anyway. But they came out and presented the first day, right? They did. Yeah, they've already done that before, yes. I'll make a motion to table the first table makes a motion to education. Table the ARPA request from the SCC. Uh, I'll second. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, and I guess we'll, we already did the, by consensus, the veterans. So, uh, Purdue Extension Contract Services Agreement 
this is something we do every year. Every year, and it's something I won't say we're, we're required to, <coughs> but I think we are. But um, nothing really changes outside of um, we we have to supply them with a place to have an office and space. So, do I want to read through that or look through it or? But it's pretty much a mirrored contract each year or so. It's just a renewal. Yeah. yeah. I like that. yeah. It's um, just for space, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just as required to give them a space for office spaces and everything else. So, I want to a motion. Randy, what's the motion, Greg? I'll second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So. Uh, consideration of any special or, or the regular invoices? We don't have any. It's the, we wanted to go ahead and take up the amended items. The, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot uh, about doing that. So I think... Let me sign this real quick. Um, The ordinance number is on this. Ordinance, yeah, is number three. Is it what? Number three. All right, this is uh, the ordinance, ordinance number 2024 OR three before the county commissioners of Scott County. It's an ordinance authorizing installation of stop sign at the intersection of Fairview Road and Boatman Road. Uh, in Fenway Township. I don't think there's really any more I need to say outside of that. What yeah, it is. So, um, the ordinance itself states in there the empowering, um, the authorizing statutes that allow the commissioner to control or have jurisdiction over the highways within the county. Um, that you all have the authority within that um, subchapter to uh, erect signage that is consistent with traffic control devices that are authorized in other places of that same article. Um, Greg was good enough to send me some information from the Uniform Traffic Control Device Manual that's referenced in the bottom of the ordinance. Um, it's just for the erection of, I think, a three-way stop at that location. Um, it's consistent with the sight line and um, uh, vision requirements for uh, approaching drivers. And the only thing that we would need to do is after passage, um, because um, it does prescribe a potential penalty um, that would be assessed against a driver who violated the traffic control device. Um, we would need to publish it for one, once each week for two consecutive weeks following uh, today's meeting. Um, the ordinance itself then authorizes the County Highway Department to install the sign. And as soon as the sign is up and after publication, um, it would be immediately effective. So uh, we just want to make sure that first we, we uh, promulgate it, advertise it, and then uh, once it's the sign is installed, the ordinance becomes effective. And is that a thirty day? It 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 says well. There's there's two part. There's two different subsections. There's one that says publish once uh, thirty days after the ordinance is passed. Um, then there's a separate subsection that deals with uh, ordinances that uh, prescribe a penalty or forfeiture for a violation. I think out of an abundance of caution, I've characterized this as a, uh, a penalty or forfeiture because there's a reference to a fund um, that if any violations were noted, like uh, the money would go into that fund basically. Um, so I'm saying that the more restrictive 
statute that just two consecutive weeks, um, once each week, following today's hearing, uh, would be more than sufficient to meet both of those requirements. Um, and then once the sign is posted, it's enforceable by um, law enforcement, um, you know, across the county. All right. Well, with that being said, um, I want to retain a motion to uh, pass the ordinance 2024 OR3 and uh, start, that, start that process. So, I'll make a motion. Randy makes a motion, Greg. I think Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, so I this day, 16. October. And there's two copies in there. Is there a reason? We need I just put two copies okay. in there. Okay. Have it. And I guess because it's a vote. Uh, Greg finishes here then. As for a raise of hands of yeas and nays. So. I'm a yay. You can be. So, uh, for record, uh, I need to see a show of hands of yeas and nays and the yeas for passing the ordinance. So, yay. Yay. Three to zero. So. There you go. And uh, that would be to pass it on the first and second reading. Uh, correct. And then publish, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I asked for a change for the for the or uh, of the ordinance or the agenda for the big ox project that we're talking about, and uh, that was something Greg was dealing with. And Jennifer, I sent you an email, or I tried to send an email. Hopefully, it did come through, but. Uh, we reached out to, I reached out to a gentleman uh, that does uh, junk removal or removes trailers and he, I, he did say, yeah, I can do it. And he sent me a quote, uh, and actually, let's see what, let me see what his name of this company is because I want to get in the record. Carson is it? Uh, the one that says ten four. Yeah. Here we go. Bear with me a second. Okay. Carson and Son Salvage. Uh, anyway, he uh, gave a quote of six thousand five hundred fifty dollars to remove two two of the trailers out there, and uh, and to make sure that all the junk went with it. So it was for six six thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Okay. So that is below the threshold amount that would require public. Let me put it this way: is below the amount that would allow the highway department, if they, you could use uh, county employees if it's that low um, to do the work, if that's what he's estimated it at. Um, but we, if we're going to use an outside contractor, I would suggest that we would still need to go through a public bidding process. Um, so, and I think we do this the exact same way um, that we would uh, public bid any any performance of work. Um, I was looking for the statute. That we well, the the question I would have, and I, I know Kevin's not here. The cat. The question I would have is if, and I I think I know James's business a little bit that. He'll 
he'll cut this thing in a million pieces and put it in a dumpster. I mean, the thing about he, he says six dumpsters is what he's talking about. So the county wouldn't have that resource to be able to go out there with welders and, and cutters and torches and everything else and cut this thing up, and I wouldn't, I, would, I really wouldn't want them out there doing that. I think it's just an option under yeah. the statute because some things could, it could reduce the cost in yeah. certain situations, so. But uh, because we do not know who the current owner is of this property, but we do know the tax, who somebody's paying somebody's taxes on it. So I mean, and for us to do this legally and, and to an event in, in the end, because we do not know who's writing the checks for the taxes. I mean, it's the 6550 would go on their taxes, would it not? And how long would it take for that to happen? So actually, I'm trying to find the, I believe it reverts to a lien whether that's a tax lien or a just a, a lien yeah. for work performed. I can't answer that question right now. I am trying to look for the specific section. But I guess where I'm getting at is that we will have, the county government would have to pay Carson up front, Carson and Sons company up front to pay him, get him paid, and then that's right. we would have to recoup our money later at a later mm -hmm. date. So. Um, and I'd like to reach out to Missy uh, just uh, from the standpoint that somebody gave me information on who they thought was possibly paying this and so um, I'd like to run that past her to see if she has any information on that person maybe we could reach out to them that uh, sounds so good that sounds good that would give us <clears throat> that would give us uh, a little more time especially if we need to get a couple more bids or if we yeah. we don't well as we've talked about for some time now on some of these properties, there aren't too many people out here that do that kind of work. And mm -hmm. I've asked you because you work with uh, Coomer Salvage and they don't take mobile <coughs> homes. And, and rarely will you get it. And I mean, he even said, I don't make much off of that because it's all. A frame of a trailer brings about 150 bucks. Yeah. So it's not really worth the fuel. Just, it's not worth the. He's just getting rid of it for us. Yeah. It's almost like I go back, and I know people laugh, but I go back to the Andy Griffith episodes that I watch almost every day and where they try to give away a cannon or they try to sell a cannon and they can't sell it. They almost have to give it away. And uh, this, we're pretty much in that same boat. Years ago, you think that would have, you know, the, the aluminum or whatever on the side of the trailer would, you know, bring big money, but it doesn't anymore. So it's more of a, hey, he's, he's removing it from the property and, so I guess we need to, Zach, at this point, we need to probably just table it and then go to advertising for um, removal of two trailers. Bids may be solicited and accepted for work. Basically, we just need to put a notice a statement that public bids are to be let and served by publication. The publication must include the information required in subsection C, um, which is the name of the person to whom the order was issued, the legal description. I'm, I'm probably just going to send this to you, um, Jennifer, for. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to send this. I'm going to send a copy of the of the whole code section to everyone so that if there's specific descriptions that we need to put in there about what work needs to be performed, um, we can do that and then Jamper will know what to publish and how to put the bids out. And okay. And we, well, I mean, I think Greg, it's in Greg District, but I mean, I, I've, I've been out there a few times I think the county can do some of this, and I, we actually contract with a guy that, you know, on mowing and picking up trash of some sort. We could utilize him because he's already he's already got a pay scale out there that 
we send him out there and say, hey, we need this mowed bush hog, or, and we need whatever existing trash bags or whatever. And that guy is who we've actually contracted with for the last few years. We just contract or contact him and say, you need to go do this. And, and he gets paid out of that on, by his contractual ob obligation. Mm -hmm. So I think we get the trailers out. The rest of it, I think he ought to be able to handle. I mean, as far as mowing and and uh, picking up the rest of the loose stuff. Yeah, good point. So we can, we just have to get this published ten days prior to the hearing, at which we're going to open the bids. Um, so it's actually a short bid response window. Um, so we're going to get that advertised and. Or I'm sorry, notice of the statement that public bids are to be let must be given at least ten days before the date of the public bid to all persons who have a known or recorded substantial property to show the property. So it would be a good idea to reach out to the city to figure out if they can figure out. If there's an again idea. a third or fourth time mm -hmm. whether right. there's somebody. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. By the way, we we've exhausted this process, but again, there was another lead that was given to me the other day, so and we'll pursue that and see where that goes. And yeah, move forward with that us. All right. Uh, I will bring. I'm gonna bring up one more thing. I think we've already passed it, but I didn't want to make a phone call without talking about it in a meeting, making sure. Did we not pass uh, the six hundred and some dollars, or seven hundred and some dollars, or maybe even fifteen hundred? Because we talked about Thomas Industry supplying a jack or a scissor jack or some sort of lifting device to clean the monument or clean Captain English out here. I thought we did. I, I just want to verify that we did so that I can call them and say, can do it. So uh, that was on my mind the other day. I passed it again and was, was walking past it and said, I thought we did that and I never called the. To, to do that. So I think we did an open meeting. We talked about maybe doing some cost savings with Thomas, you know, handling, you know, being able to supply a, some sort, not a scissor jack, because that's just stick me out. It's yeah, no, the other one. A two can lift, really. Yeah, whatever it is. So, all right, I'm gonna, I just wanted to verify. So I'm going to call that guy and see when he can schedule that. So, uh, Going back the other way, you said we don't have a regular special. No regular special plans. Okay. No. I'm okay. going to ask this because we're. Wait a minute. And we did agree uh, during the meeting about Kevin White cleaning the monuments to correct. Who's Kevin White? Yeah. Is that a guy that you had? Yeah, he he does a lot of monument cleaning, and that's it, it, he's done it before. For the oh, very yeah. monuments. Yeah, I thought we did that too. Because yeah. I thought we were just waiting. It, for it was like, what was the amount? It was it 1500 or less? Uh, it was maybe less. Huh? I, I can't think remember, but it wasn't was much. That, he yeah, was also doing that wall over there too. One. He didn't get back with me on that. This was just the monuments. Which yeah. I ain't worried about the wall. I'll clean the wall myself. <laughs> All right. When I get home. <laughs> I think we did do that at the same time. So. Okay. Um, this next thing, we're talking about payroll again. Are we, are we good? <laughs> to approve claims for the payroll? No, approve payroll for October the 4th. Last time, I mean, that again, my my understanding of <clears throat> explanation from the DLGF is that if there is money existing in a major category for a fund um, that would cover, you know, the costs, they. First off, I don't think that Jennifer's in any situation where she cannot pay those claims. I mean, that's that's the ruling that I have received. Uh, second off, I think we're under an obligation as the legislative and executive body to approve proper claims. 
So I believe we have an obligation to pay for work performed, and that would include payroll. It's council's obligation to uh, you know, transfer funds within um, line items and or appropriate, if necessary, um, for a major budget, budget category. You know. But I don't believe at this time, based on the things I've been given, that there's any deficit in, a, in an entire fund. So that's my take. So yeah, I believe there is. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, does the fund have anything to do with payroll? Yes. Is it the lit public safety fund? Yes. <laughs> You believe that there's a debt, a crap deficit? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I still believe that you have, you have an obligation as a, as a county executive like, to approve proper claims, and we're obligated on claims for work performed related to somebody's functions on, on their job. So that, that's my take on it. Well, I just don't want to be doing something that knowingly know that there's a deficit someplace and we're well, but I also understand that's, the law that's, says that's an issue that honestly, I mean, and I'm sit here and say this, it's not a commissioner concern. That's a auditor council issue, and my understanding is Jennifer has made them aware of the situation. Yeah, and I do know that too. No meeting has been held this month, yep. so. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the payroll for October 4th, 2024. But if I invest in the uh, county, or anyway, <laughs> as a commissioner, I agree to pay the payroll. I make a motion to pay the payroll. Randy makes the motion to pay the payroll for October 4th, 2024, Greg. I'll second. I'll second that. I'll make that unanimous. Or Greg, second that. I'll make that unanimous. So, so Mike, to answer your earlier question about the tax, like the tax, it does, the, the county auditor shall place the total amount certified under subsection C, which is any amount not still owed and not made within uh, 30 days after the notice has been delivered of the amount that's owed for the work performed on the county, the county auditor would place that on the affected property as a special assessment, and the total amount, including free interest, would be collected as double what taxes are collected. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, for the minutes of September 18th and October 2nd. Everybody had an opportunity to read those and approve them. Yes. <laughs> I'll make a motion. I'll entertain a motion. Rainey makes a motion. Greg? I'll second. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, Councilor, do you have anything outside of what we already discussed? No. Jennifer, you have anything? Yes. Um, the Zolmans were in yesterday and brought this. Yeah. The Zolmans brought that, and that was for um, Big Oak. That big old girl kills them, sir. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You sign that one. It says just a note. <clears throat> Oak Hill Cemetery Association Board. The Oak Hill Cem Cemetery Association would like to thank the Scott County Board of Commissioners, Scott County Highway Department staff, and any who promptly remove the fallen tree from our cemetery. Your great work is sincerely appreciated. Thank you. Oak Hill Cemetery Association Board. So, mm -hmm. And for people that didn't know what happened, we had one of the last storms came through, a big tree fell and fell across some, old, I think some of the older monuments and, and uh, county went out and cut the trees off of the, off the Stones and got it cleaned up. So, uh, I like that. 
Mike and Barb Zolman and the other folks with the uh, board there at Oak Hill Cemetery and thank uh, the guys at the highway department for their work out there. So they did a good job. Yep, I do. I'll, uh, nobody else got anything? You got anything, Greg? Sorry. No. Randy, you got anything? It's a very nice card and thank you, Oak Hill Cemetery, for thanking us. I want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make that motion. And before you turn the bird off, I want everybody to know what time it is. So. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>